Curious as to why this isn't already the case that broker dealers would act in the best interests of their clients. Well, this is an issue that the Securities and Exchange Commission has really been looking at and studying for more than a decade, and something that the industry actually has wanted the SEC to act on to really update the, the, the standard that brokers and advisors are required to operate under. You may recall that Congress in the Dodd-Frank Act uh, authorized the SEC to do this back in 2010, and it's something that we had hoped had been done. Frankly, uh, most in the industry already operate with the best interest standard. FINRA, the, the primary regulator of brokers, already imposes that. Most claims brought are brought under a quote unquote fiduciary claim. So, this in many respects is updating to where we are, but it's important to get a rule put in place. And so, we're very uh, optimistic on what the SEC is going to do here to really raise the standard. And based upon what they proposed, this is going to be a very tough standard. Uh, we'll in ensure a big compliance lift for firms, but the industry is supportive of moving forward on it. Now, will broker dealers need to make substantial changes? What would the cost of those changes be? Well, they certainly will need to make changes. Again, I, I think most of our members believe they do operate in their clients' best interest when they're providing brokerage uh, versus investment management. And most of the industry provides both sets of services. But this will be, I mean, the, the proposal that the SEC put forward, and we'll have to see what the final rule is today, uh, if it's approved by the SEC, will have some, be very substantial, very material. And, and even though it will be principles-based, the duty, the obligation put on the brokers will be quite substantial. Substantial as it relates to putting the client's interest best of having to not just disclose but mitigate and eliminate certain conflicts of interest. And keep in mind, contrary to the now defunct Department of Labor rule, this will apply against all retail brokerage accounts, not just qualified retirement accounts. So we expect it to be a large compliance lift for the industry, but it's one that we think is the right thing to do. Mr. Benson, uh, Guy Johnson in London, what was wrong right. with that Barack Obama rule? What was wrong with the fiduciary rule? You talk about this being a high standard, but you also talk about the fact uh, that it is different to that fiduciary rule. Why was so that so bad? So there were a number of things that we thought were problematic with the Department of Labor rule. First of all, it, it, it only applied to a certain number of accounts, not the broad retail brokerage accounts, which was what Congress had intended when it adopted uh, the, the Dodd-Frank Act, Section 956 of the Dodd-Frank Act, and authorized the Securities and Exchange Commission, not the Department of Labor, to undertake this effort. Second of all, the Department of Labor rule was overly uh, uh, prescriptive in its approach that really, as it was being implemented, was really causing firms to pull back and, and take away choice of product from clients and that we didn't believe was in clients best interest and I think the uh, that, that the court obviously saw as well and third it added a, uh, a private right of action that only Congress uh, can impose a private right of action not a regulatory agency and we thought this was inappropriate because there already is a private right of action in terms of how uh, clients can redress claims against brokers so there were many reasons why we thought the Department of Labor rule was inappropriate. This is the job of the Securities and Exchange Commission. They're doing that job. It applies against all retail accounts, not just IRAs, for instance, that the DOL yep. rule would have. And it's a principle-based approach, but importantly, very clear duties and obligations, including much of the same language that was in the Department of Labor okay. uh, rule. Do you think it's going to get past House Democrats even if it is passed today? Do you think it's going to get past state regulators even if it is passed today? Well, we have to see. I, I hope that it does. And uh, again, based upon our interpretation of what was proposed, this is a very substantial material rule, raises the bar for brokers, and by the way, uh, is also, we believe, going to have uh, implications for investment advisors under the so-called fiduciary standard, where they're going to provide additional guidance and clarification there. So I think people need to look at the words on the page, because from a, from, a, from a regulated entity standpoint, those words matter greatly. So we think that this, when, when people read this rule, as we read the original proposal, this will be quite substantial. And one key point I want to make here is, a lot of people people have said this only requires you to disclose away conflicts. 
Our interpretation of the proposal is quite the contrary. It didn't just require you to disclose away conflicts. It also required in, in several instances to mitigate or eliminate those conflicts. Even the Advisors Act doesn't always provide for that. And in some cases, this was a higher standard than the Advisors Act. So I think people will need to look at the words on the page just as we will. But our interpretation of where the SEC has been headed is this is quite material, quite expansive, very much raises the bar on the standard of conduct, which we think many in the industry already adhere to. And will be and, and the industry will be under a, a, a quite dramatically increased obligation in putting their clients' interests ahead of theirs.